It's November 30th, 2023. Henry Kissinger's dead, so happy Henry Kissinger death day to everybody who celebrates. I assume that was actually yesterday at like absurdly early or absurdly late. But anyways, this is a loofah that we had to harvest early. Probably like most people growing loofah because it got too cold and the vine got damaged. So you're usually supposed to wait until they dry on the vine by themselves. And I was on a naturalist going through the whole genus and looking at them all. And actually I realized that in the wild, or when they're not being picked, when they dry naturally on the vine, at the very bottom here, you can sort of see it, there's a ring. This is the end where the flower was. And let me sit it down and show you. <laughs> there's a little indentation all along right here. You can't really see it now, but you can tell it's there if you know what you're looking for. But in the wild, or if a gardener doesn't come along and pick them when they're fully dried, this part will actually come off so that all of the seeds can just go right out. And that's how they propagate themselves. Because I was wondering about that, because I was like, I don't really think anything eats them when they're ripe, so how are the seeds spreading? Well, they, they drop them like a literal seed bomb. But anyways, I'll show you how to get this open. Because this thing is heavy. It's not as heavy as it was when it was still growing. Because at one point, I think it must have weighed like 20 pounds at least. Like, it was absurd. But when they are green like this, well, I'm going to drop it and we'll see what happens. Not much. But anyways, to get these open, you want to... Oh, there's a spider on my hat. Hold on. <laughs> Look at that little spider. You can come over onto the plant. Go get that ladybug. Go onto the plant. I'm doing a video here. You're interrupting. Okay, it went off. Anyways, look at that ladybug. It already got interrupted, but anyways, I'm pretty... Oh, there's a baby, too. Well, there's the jumping spider that was on my hat. And there's a baby milkweed assassin bug. Anyways, back to the lupa. When they're green, you want to loosen the skin from the inside and you... It's a sponge on the inside, so you can't damage it. I've seen people using hammers, but I think this is easier. So you just put it on a hard surface and step on it. You hear the crunch. all the sap in there it's not really sticky but it's foamy it's kind of funny it's like soap suds all right and now you can see all the suds and that's the sap and now we can peel it once I attach my hat more firmly in case it decides to get windy So now you just put your finger in there and you can pry up the skin. Apparently when it's dried naturally like it's supposed to be and when you don't get random cold snaps it's a lot harder to get off. So when it is dry properly it's recommended that you soak it in water first and then it'll come off more like this. And I'm just putting this in this plant pot here. Those are from the ones I peeled yesterday. We had 12 loaves of form before it got too cold. I peeled three yesterday, so this will be the fourth. Let me put it.
yeah if you can just get a finger in there and then you can slide it up and down I don't know if you can see but it's it comes off easy once you get some leverage section is going to come off once I get it. Yeah, so here's this. Here's the whole skin and here's this. Also, for more random information, there are at least seven species of loofah. This one is, they're all in the loofah genus, which is literally just loofah. This one here is sometimes called the smooth loofah because it has smooth sides. It's one of the most commonly domestic ones. There, this one's scientific name is currently uh, Lufa. I don't know. It's got A E. I don't know how, if you're supposed to still pronounce it Egypt or if it's Egypt, but it's like Lufa Egyptiaca or maybe Egyptiaca because I think they found these like in hieroglyphics, so they had. This, I'm not sure if it was domesticated yet, back in e ancient Egypt, so that's cool. Another commonly domestic one is ridge gourd or angled lufa, ridge lufa, and it gets long like this because it's also domesticated. But unlike this one having smooth sides, that one has really distinctive ridges that go down the sides. And it's also sometimes called Chinese okra because it, I mean, yeah, I guess it kind of does look like an okra pod, the way okra pods have the ridges. And it's also eaten the same way as an okra pod. You pick them when you're, they're young, chop them up and use them for whatever you want. And that's also how these ones are eaten. You get them when they're young, like every Google result says like seven inches or something. And then you cook them. Uh, we didn't do that because we wanted to grow them for sponges and to save seeds. And that endeavor, or seed saving at least, is failing so far, unfortunately, from the cold. But yeah. <laughs> this whole section would be off already if I could use both hands, but I have told the kid. Gravity, help me. Thank you. Yeah, so here's all this skin. It's just all going in this plant pot here. And I'm gonna help feed my blueberries. Look at that. And it's fine if some dirt gets on here while we're doing this, cause it's gonna get rinsed off once we go back inside. It's, this is a lot easier with two hands. You 